Guys, what is going on? It is Matt and Australian Survivor 2017 is over, but that does not mean the content stops right there. In fact, I'm going to try to interview every single one of these players. Some of these videos are going to be done via video, some of them will be done via audio, and the next couple of days I've got something pretty special in store for you guys. I've got half an hour interviews with each of the top three, so both Tara, Peter, and the winner, Jericho. We're gonna to chat to all three of those guys, and over the next couple of weeks, I've got a few more interviews to post as well. I'm gonna catch up with AK, Henry, all these guys. Hopefully, we're gonna be able to get onto a video at some point, just to have a chat to you guys about how they played, answer some of their questions. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, today, I've got the first of these videos, and that is with Tara. Tara, second place winner, and myself and Tara originally had 10 minutes to chat, and she can talk, I can talk. We ended up going for, I think, well over 25, 30 minutes. Had a heap of fun. Uh, really went in-depth to her game, her relationships on the island. A couple of funny moments that we picked up on at the reunion as well. We're going to get straight into that chat. I hope you guys enjoy it. She was a heap of fun. If you want to follow her and ask her some more questions, all her socials will come up as well. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe all that kind of stuff, so you can see more. I'm gonna post more over the next few days, but for now, let's chat to Tara. Okay guys, we are now joined with Tara, final two finisher, barrel racer extraordinaire, and legend of Australian Survivor this season. Tara, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, hi, thanks Matt. How you doing? After, good story, mate. After, oh, it's pretty good, isn't it? Now, after everything that's happened, the last well, 55 days, how are you feeling? How have you coped after watching the finale, reunion, all that kind of stuff? Just how are you feeling? I guess now I can just breathe. I mean, it's bittersweet. I I didn't want it to end because I love Survivor and I love like hanging out with everyone, but I also needed to know, you know, am I gonna buy the property in Noosa? Am I gonna get a car? So there was those moments where I was just thinking, the game for some have already finished, but for Jericho and I, we, we just had no idea. Really and is. yeah, I, yeah, we really didn't. Like we finished and got home in Australia in July and then we've just been waiting and there's been, the, the jury members are fantastic. We, we wanted to respect the game. We didn't want to know anything. We didn't even really try and hang out with them just in case something got flipped. Isn't that, so you had no idea leading into the actual live finale if you'd won or not? Absolutely no idea. Wow. I was hoping I had Lockie's vote, <laughs> and <then laughs> I was pretty much going to wing it from then onwards. I was, I was like, please, I don't want it to be an eight-one vote. I want it to be, you know, a somewhat interesting where they're like Jericho, Tara, Jericho. So, yeah, it was really. I was surprised I won over Sarah's vote. She did come in saying to Jericho and I, I don't know who I'm voting for yet, and the fact that I won her over was oh, that was that was a bonus. Well, I think you had a pretty good final tribal as well. I mean, uh, it, it's really tough. I know when we were leading up to it, everyone was kind of dreading getting to final two and having to make a conversation, having to plead for your own game. What did you do to win Sarah over? And like, is there something particular you said that she said was the moment? Or do you know what happened there? Um, I think for me, I knew Jericho might go in and try and own the moves and maybe the jury might see that as hang about you really didn't own them mm -hmm. um so i was going in with that straight i'm going to be honest but not to the stage where i was going to be like i'm lazy and i'm not going to speak <laughs> i'm actually going to say i did do some sort of moves and i try to not overthink my pitch i try to not make a script up in my head i really just wanted to go in knowing they're going to hammer me and i've got to be prepared, like be prepared and so for myself, it was just saying, you know what, guys, I did do a few moves to get some people out and I just helped. I didn't, like, you know, make the move. But really my game started at, you know, 49. And I think Sarah has now told me it that was respect to her. That was showing, you know what, she's owning it. She knows that, you know, some of the moves that uh, even going to some tribal councils, I didn't know what was going on. It was like, it was, I remember even saying to Jonathan, what's going on? And he's like, Tari, I don't know. Like, <laughs> you probably should know. And I'm like, this is fantastic. Like, this is, this is like watching it like at home. It was, it was the best thing, but also sometimes it made me look a little bit like I had like no, no, you know, help towards that move. 
So yeah, I had to really watch what I was going to say at the end. Well, that was one of the things. You at Tribal Council were one of the most animated characters. And as you said, you definitely reacted <laughs> like quite often shocked about moves that were being made. I now from my I have a lot of um a lot of gifs a lot of gifs is that what they call it? gifs gifs I don't really know. I had a lot of them and even like my family go like we're not like there is sometimes when you know we're sitting around Christmas and someone might walk in I'm like oh I didn't even know you were coming and they're like Tara so it's not it's nothing to be like I'm being arrogant or I genuinely and I I don't know if you know this Matt I have a bit of a big mouth so I guess some people didn't want to tell me too much because I, I get I got very excited and I but, couldn't help it. So I'd say that's good. You know that's, what I just heard? That is what I want to see though, Tara. I want to see people that are excited at Survivor. And I remember when I played for me going out there at Tribal Council, it was that moment right there where I looked around and went, I'm I'm on Survivor. And I just loved it. And that's exactly how I felt you were behaving as well. Like definitely you were shocked. I'm so glad you said that. Because I, I knew going into trouble, like, crap, someone goes home. Hope it's not me, but someone does go home. And But it was that whole, like, we're going to trouble. But it, it sucked because she's like, high five, we just got someone out. But you couldn't. You couldn't be. It was just the weirdest emotion because, like, I dressed up. I got I did my hair. You know, I wore my belt. I It was, like, a great moment. And even when I did get voted out from Summertow and I was sitting there, thinking to myself, oh my goodness, like now I'm getting my torch snuffed. I was still even excited. <laughs> so it was just the weirdest emotion. I hope people there aren't thinking, oh, you know, she's so up herself or whatever. But I, I just loved the whole experience. And yeah, I cried a lot. And yeah, I missed my family heaps and I was hungry. That's part of the game. You know what I mean? Like that's what is, you, you can't just, I have no regrets. And I hope none of the other contestants do. So I, that's my personality. Oh, that, Done. Uh, Boom. Perfect. Now, you did yeah. mention just something just then in regards to you being voted off originally. And I guess that's probably mm-hmm. one question that you might get asked a fair bit since coming back from the game. Being voted off. No, not no, not really. Not, not really. Not, no, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> not kidding. Well, of course it is. <laughs> well, let's hear, from, <laughs> let's hear from you. Being voted off, the split vote, I think from memory, was with AK and yourself. Went to a revote. Yeah. You then got voted yep, off, then, but then you're told, hey, and Elise, yeah, you get told I'm, you're staying in the game though. At the time, how did you feel looking back at it? How did it feel? Did it feel like you kind of got like a second chance in the game, or, or just what were you thinking at all these moments? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like that happened so quick. I really didn't channel much. So you know, good work for Tessa, AK, Jared, Ziggy, Peter. They got me out, and that's that's the game. So me sitting there, I was like, okay, am I going to get a burger? Am I going to get a pizza? Like, I was literally like, oh, I get to see my kids. This is all, this is all like, this is all part of the experience. Um, and then boom, you head into exile and you're going over to the other tribe. Now, my heart was still in Summertow because that's my, that was your little, your first tribe. You know, that's your little baby. So I was like, I don't want to go to summer. You know, I didn't, like, it was just a weird feeling. And I remember saying to Annalise, um, on the Exile Island, like, what is even, what's the other tribe's name? Because I was just so bitter. I just wanted to stay and be comfortable in my little shell. Um, so I woke up, and I think I even said it on um, on one of the ep- episodes, I'm going to wake up and leave my tears on Exile. Now, that didn't happen, but it, I did leave my tears about me being voted out. You know, I left my tears. I didn't leave my anger, but I left my tears knowing that this has just happened. We've got to move forward. Um, and, like, how it's, – it's very hard to talk to super fans because they don't like a lot of twists. They don't like it when people get saved, and then they especially don't like it when they're in the top two. So I get that. I mean, it just sucks that it was my episode that that twist happened. But I don't know, guys. Like, I tend to just feel so blessed. I had that second chance. I took a step back from the driver's seat and let, you know, Luke and Jericho, you know, say to me, let's vote out Jackie. Then we voted out Kent. It was just, it just happened so good for me at that particular time. But this is the thing, Tara. It didn't, I don't, I personally don't think it just happened for you, though. I mean, you have to do something to get further in the game. Once you get voted off, Instantly, it points a target on you. And we saw this with the season last year where Nick 
and Connor both got voted off. Now, they kind of were able to save their games for a little bit longer, but eventually that stigma came back. Now, you, that didn't happen to you. You stayed till the very end. So what did you do that changed that for you? Because I, I, I think whenever anyone says, oh, you got a second chance and they're upset about it or whatever, if that was Nick last year, if Nick made it to Final Two... People would not be having that discussion, I don't think. So for whatever reason, I don't know why that's a difference. But you earned it mm. and you, you got yourself further in the game. So you had to do that. So I think as long as you can own that and as long as you can talk about that, who cares what anyone thinks yeah. about your second chance? Because you made it there. Thanks. And it, it's such a, like, it's a, a subject that I just want to be like, oh my God, I got saved. But then in the other, it's like, I've got to watch what I say. Because you just... You just know there's people out there that are like, I hate twists. Or why did you, why were you safe? Why, you know, who who made you so special to be saved? But I do hope that, you know, the fans out there can see that I definitely took that second chance as, like, definitely that. Like, I didn't just go in and go, hey, let's vote this person, let's do that, and I'm going to have a hissy fit. I really did just take a step back. So, yep. And, you know, and, it helps. And, it definitely and there's helps one me. thing that people say, they always say, oh, that twist was put in there to save that particular person. Now, I have it on really good authority. I had a chat to a couple of guys at the finale on Friday night, and they mentioned that things like this twist are locked into place. They do not get moved or changed to save a particular person. Believe that. Yeah, if you, I if do you not want to believe have... it, that's the case. Yeah, that's right. I do not have a brother or sister that's a producer. <laughs> this was not the plan from day like the the moment that my name was written out, it it was any like AK anyone. It would have just been that night that person was saved, yes, and exactly right. I I had to ask the question as well because I was just sitting there thinking like, is there someone is there someone in in there that is like sabotaging? Like I just had to make sure that that night was just going to always be planned. There might be someone looking down on you from above, but in this case, it wasn't production giving you a saviour. So exactly. I think it just happened. And it was lucky and it worked, but I think you turned it from luck to a place that actually got you further in the game. You can't just get For sure. that far in Survivor based on luck. It doesn't happen. So you get yourself to the final two and you possibly could have almost had the, the chance as well to select who would have been sitting you at the end, if you had that chance mm. to win that final immunity challenge, out of Jericho and Peter, who did you think you were going to take? I was always going to take Jericho. Only because I just, and he would have probably still beat me, but it was just to go back to deserving. And people were probably like, oh, yeah, sure. But I honestly had a better pitch against Jericho than what I did with Peter. Yeah. Peter played a great game. I get that. But I do remember saying, even at that tribal council, that to me, on my personal opinion, and I just felt he just he deserved to be there to fight for that that last title because I knew he had good moves, I knew he was powerful, and I didn't want to sit next to someone that I was just going to be like, obviously I'm going to win. I wanted to fight for it, and you know I I barrel race. Now you know what it is, Matt. Proud of you. <laughs> I um I don't go in going, okay, I'm just going to probably get second. I'm going to go, and I, and I love it when the big girls rock up because you know you've got to fight hard for that spot. That's just who I am. That's how I've been brought up. Yes, Jericho, you know, I saved him in the fire challenge and he won and he beat me, but you know what? Like the, med, the better game player won at the end, and that's just what it came down to. If, um, and, and I think that's really, I mean, for me, I know when I went out there, I would just want to go up against the weakest person in the world, but I'm not like you by the sounds <laughs> of things. I'm happily, <laughs> I'll happily take the easy win. But I think, yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to uh, be, be proud or have pride of someone that doesn't want to do that, that actually wants to go out there and make the effort and go up against someone who had such a good game like Jericho and try to beat him. And I think for the votes to be as close as they were, I think you did a darn good job to get to get to that point as well. So congratulations to you. Now, yeah. Jericho Jericho won an advantage where he got to vote off someone from the jury. If you, oh, had, if you yes. had won that, what would you have done? Would you have voted off Tessa as well? Or was there someone else you wanted to target? I, do you know, I, I'm so glad you're asking these questions. Um, so for me, Jared, he was a huge, like, red flag. He has been there the longest. He had the most information coming at him by all different people. He, to me, had a lot of power onto who he was going to pick for that final two. He also 
had a good connection with Peter. So I sort of knew, you know, if Peter was going to be sitting next to me, that vote was for Peter. The other person, obviously, was Luke, because I knew he had Michelle and Jericho, and that was two. Already, straight away, he had those two. So he was a massive threat for me. Um, And then the third person that liked to ask the question, it would have been Tessa, but she was a lot down my list, because as her knowing that she's a super fan, I would have loved to try and prove to her why I did deserve to be there because she told me I was the weakest one out of the four. So, I I mean, thanks, Jerry, for getting Tessa out. But I honestly think, he, like, I don't know still if that was the right thing for him, but it, it helped my game. It, it didn't help Peter's game. And it's really hard to know as well, isn't it? Because you don't know what the person's thinking since getting to Jury Villa. You don't know what's being said to them. And sometimes... These people who are so articulate, if you can give them the answer that they want on the night as well, they can be like your saving grace. And someone for you, I think, on the the finale, when you got your final speech, Henry seemed to really help, at least with a response for you. Did that? Do you think that helped or yeah. you did? I think, um, oh, that was great. Because he, I remember saying, um, like, I did speak before that, because obviously they can't show everything like I did edit a little bit saying oh guys it's frustrating because I'm trying to get my point across so when he got up and said you know you're talking shit and I was like wait a minute I'm talking shit but then I just let him go because I knew he had my back and I think the reason why his decision was hard excuse me at the end was that he his head was saying Jericho because of the gameplay but his heart was saying me and of course you have to sometimes go with your head because I think he he's even said this to me since. Like, if the decision was not an easy one, it was one that he was not taking, you know. So out of respect, I think he chose to just give me a little bit of a rap towards the end there. It was a nice moment. I really enjoyed it. And you definitely, you seem to form bonds out in the game with these kind of alpha male types. One in particular, your friendship and relationship with Lockie was something that just, like, was across the whole season, basically, Tara. Now, it was funny... Because before this interview, I was having a bit of a read of your bio, and there was one quote that you made before the game where you said, I want to find someone and be like besties. I want to do everything together, do each other's hair, and then I'm going to turn on them. Which is exactly what you did to Lockie. So you basically, I mean, you went out there wanting to do it. And did. And you did Mm -hmm. it. Was Lockie always always the target, or how did that come about? No. So I remember the first um, day I was just, chatting to everyone and I really liked the vibe I was getting off in Elise and and she was sort of a bit like me like oh like is everyone coming up to you and I'm like yeah they are and then she even said oh I'd love to braid your hair and I was like boom <laughs> like this is the chick this is the person but it didn't work out like that it, it once that um once we started to like I, I I flipped I did flip on Adam I then decided I better start looking at something or, or or somewhere and it just so happened that Lockie and I just started chatting and then I'm like this guy's actually pretty cool because uh, you know first off you think oh what's he going to be like it's probably gonna you know be the the usual drop but no he was he's just fantastic and you know you and him and I outside the world probably would never met we our paths would have never crossed but the fact is the survivor world we just we just met and we yeah, well, we didn't form love. There's no story out of it, sorry. But we just became mates, and it's a long-time friendship. It's not just the game. It's all out of the game as well. It was funny. I was sitting near Jordan, who's Lockie's partner, on the finale night, and <gasps> I think there was a bit of conversation about how cute and how hot Lockie was, and I think a few people jumped in. I think she was getting a bit <laughs> jealous, to be honest, Tara, of your relationship, so you've clearly formed a really close bond. <laughs> But the other thing is, I and my husband, who just sat there and was like, yeah, guys, this is Tara. Like, I just tend to, I don't know if you get it, but I just tend to just say stuff. And I think it, it, I used to do it to boost his ego. If he had a good ego, he was kicking ass in challenges. So, you know, it just kept going. And then, like, and then he's like, Jordan's here. And I'm like, ah, oh, I forget. I mean, Jordan's <laughs> stunning. There's nothing to be worried about. But... It's almost like a little bit of a brother-sister relationship. You know, you have that tease and, and you know, that back and forth banter. But he ended up being that the one person that I told from my start that I would just take out towards the end, and I did. So 
great Sorry, Lockie. No, it was a great move, I think, and I think he respected that completely as well. And he gave you his vote at the end. Now, you mentioned yes. in that little, well, that long answer about flipping and how when we watched it back, you hated the term flipper, flipping, all this kind of stuff. But there was one other term that you hated more than any other. And it was one of the best, funniest moments at Tribal Council when the subject of goats came up. Oh. And I, it didn't seem like you were too upset about the term itself uh, being used at players, but more so <laughs> how it might have impacted a goat's feeling because a goat as a cat animal doesn't act like they were saying. <laughs> Can you tell me about a goat in Survivor and then a goat in the real world? <laughs> in In my head, again, goat I thought was greatest of all time. So I was getting confused. Because to me, I'm like, but they're not a goat. They're not the greatest of all time. <laughs> and then someone, I think it was AK actually, like start at the start of the game was like, sorry, a goat is like someone that like, you know, follows and stuff. I'm like, eh? that doesn't make sense. So then like once again, it came up at Tribal and I just had to say like, can we just change the term? Because for me, out at Roma, when I had my goats, they did not follow each other. They were always out on their own doing their own stuff. And I just couldn't get my head around it. <laughs> and I just remember... Even when I was speaking, going, they're going to edit this, Tara, stop talking. But I was like, nah, I've got to keep going. Um, but I don't know. It's still, I don't know. It's the goat term, is it still happening in Survivor? Like, this is definitely a thing? I think it's still happening, yeah. It's been around for a little while okay. now. And I think people, there yeah. are definitely people online that are considering changing it just because of your speech. And I think I know. there's a couple and of then goats thought, out there voting, uh, writing some surveys right now to get up and get people out there. But we'll see. We'll see if I we can change it. I know farmers that are now, like, I've, I've offended them and I'm like, I can't win. I can't win. It's just, it's so hilarious. And maybe I just take things as a joke, maybe too much. And I don't mean to offend people. Um, and then I, and then Paul, um, Peter was like, so you're now calling me a sheep. I'm like, well, it's just easy for me to like, to me, that is what you were. But I'm just trying my hardest to work out what the term is and get it around my head. So Tara, Tara one, yeah, thing I, one thing I think we learned while playing Survivor is you cannot please everyone and someone I is always going anyone. to be upset. So that's just, right. I'm sorry to the sheep farmers <laughs> and to the goat farmers. It is what it is. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Before we let you go, I've got a couple of quick last questions I wanted to ask you. First, The first one came from one of the guys on Twitter, and they wanted to know, what did you learn about yourself from playing the game? I That's a good one. I learned that, you know, sometimes I have to give myself a little bit more praise and credit towards just what I can achieve in my own, you know, goals. Sometimes I put these mad goals up, and then I'm like, oh, I didn't even get close. So I have to, I think Survivor has just definitely taught me to be a bit more confident in myself and to own it and to, you know, have fun with it. Beautiful. Now, if you've got a couple of kids, uh, now it's three boys, is that right? Yeah. Uh, if they yeah. were to play Survivor, first of all, would you let them? But if they did play Survivor, what advice would you give them? So usually after um, the episode is aired the next day, we have breakfast and Zai and Jet, who's 10 and 8, will say, Mum, do you really think that that move was good for your strategy? Like, do you really think that so these kids, I think, would be on Survivor tomorrow? <laughs> would I let them? Yes, because I'd be hoping one of them would come home with some money. So <laughs> I, I, I have a, I've not only shared this experience just with myself, I've experienced, experienced this with my children who are flipping crazy over this, this whole game now that we even had to have a Survivor party where I had to make challenges and we had a tribal council and a kid cried because he had to get sent home, but he really didn't have to go home. And it was just amazing but scary at the same time what I've created. Um, the advice I'd give them would be, boys, be yourself and let them all know that your mother, Tara, was on Survivor. Exactly and right. That might scare them. That might scare them. Blood versus water coming up in the future. Maybe you versus yeah. Jet go up against each other. Yeah. You can vote him nice. off. It'd be amazing. Now, if, if there was someone from your season that you had them to team up with, maybe, let's say, without being Lockie, because Lockie's a pretty obvious mm -hmm. answer, who would you have the kids align themselves with from your season? Oh, good. Um, I I would probably look at Mark, not Tarzan, but Mark, special ops. 
I would think that they would learn so much from just even just what he can bring to camp, that even just his his way of life. I would I would love for them to follow Mark. I think he would definitely get them close to the end. Yeah, I think so too. And I think he's one the sort of player that at the end you could use as a bit of a meat shield as well and then get someone to vote yeah. you off. Just like you did yeah. with, yeah. with Lockie just Tara. Like it <laughs> <laughs> just runs in the family, Matt. We can't help it. It's always good. It's, I love it. Backstabbing your best friends in the game is what it should all be about, really, I think. Now, before I let you go, what's next? What are you going to do next, Tara? I know before you went into the game, you were studying, I think, uh, drama and history or education. Are you still going to yep. do that? Uh, is there other plans? Yeah. What, are you, what are you doing? I think, um, like, the day I got back from Samoa, I was making school lunches. So, for me, it's straight back into the old mother, you know, dropping the kids off at school routine. I have just been announced as the 2017-2018 ambassador for Mates for Mates, which is an organisation that is so special to me because of my father who um, passed away last year from suicide. So this is an awareness that I want to get out there, make it public, you know, let's talk about it, let's not be, you know, shy around the bush. So I'm using my little 15 minutes of fame and it just happened that I was asked and I was so blessed. So definitely working with them. Um, I've just won the 3D barrel comp. So again, probably don't know, but it's I get a saddle and a buckle and I, I also get a ticket to America for 2018 to compete for Australia. Wow, so, congratulations. Yeah, a, a, thank you. A fair bit going on um, and just loving life and now I can get back and talk to people without whispering and, and saying I can't say anything. Without, so, having, yeah, to, I'm gonna, without having to be too worried. And you did just without mention... Without having to worry. You did mention your family. Now, I got the chance to meet your wonderful mum on Friday night, Shirley. Shirley? She is just... I, I can't speak highly enough of Shirley. She's an absolute legend. How How's she gone with you playing the game? So, mum, I was last November when I actually did the first audition and mum, um, the whole time through this whole experience, she's been, just go for it. And then I'm like, what about the kids? Oh, I'll watch them. You know, so I don't know why I'm making her sound weird. Um, so, yeah, she, she was like my support person from day dot. You, if you want to ask her if she would look like, if I would be able to go back to Survivor, she would say no, because the children really did, you know, make her very tired. Um, but, yeah, she, she was great. Uh, it was a distraction for both of us, you know, with Dad passing. It was her life partner for 40 years. It was something that she just one day just, it happened to be, the best time to grieve because she woke up going, I can do this now, I'm on my own and I can do it. And without me every day being there, it helped her do that. So fantastic, you know, oh, good. All, all, all for Cheryl, team well, Cheryl. It's glad to hear how proud your family is of you. Uh, I hope you realise how proud we all are of you as well. I think you played a fantastic game to get to where you got. So close to winning. Congratulations. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today, Tara. Thanks so much, and hopefully we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Matt. See you Cheers. soon. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Tara. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you guys did too. If you want to see more, be sure to follow my page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And on Twitter, I'll be asking you guys some questions as well to ask the next contestants I'll be interviewing. So to be sure to follow me there to get your questions in these videos. But until then, guys, I'll speak to you soon.